Guru Nation, welcome to another episode of Random Musings from the Clinical Trials Guru. Keep the questions coming. They're very good. Um, Instagram is probably the quickest way to get a hold of me, but you can also text me, 949-415-6256, or basically anywhere else, that you, like LinkedIn, Facebook takes me the longest to answer, so if it's Facebook, I usually check it, but I apologize if I'm late on Facebook, so Instagram or text. Today I got two that I will combine into one, one podcast, so the this person asks like seven questions, and then I will get to the uh, second question, let me make sure I have them here. Yeah, so I got I got a good stuff for this podcast. So it's about careers uh, in research, and then it's also about how to expand on your career. So let me get started. So number one, how do I get my foot into the clinical research field? I talk about this a lot. There are lots of opportunities in research once you're in. I think by far the greatest chance of success is at the site level, the research site level, and preferably the smaller the clinic, the better chances for you to get started. Now, if you are if you already have connections like and your connections are at an academic medical center or a large institution, that will work too. But most people don't have connections, so my strategies are really designed for people trying to start at smaller clinics. So that's how you get your foot in the door at a small clinic or tap into your connections to get you somewhere. The point is, it doesn't matter if you want to be a CRA or you want to be a project manager, whatever you want to be eventually, you need to just get started somewhere in the industry, anywhere. Anywhere in clinical research is good. That's a good start. Um, Because as you'll see, you can quickly uh, expand your career tra- trajectory based on what you discover. And a lot of people, they don't even know what they want to do. They think they know what they want to do, and then they get into research and they realize, no, I didn't actually want to be a CRA. I prefer to be a coordinator, or I prefer to run my own clinic one day. Who knows what it is? I mean, I have no idea, but you will, hopefully you will know what it is, but you can't figure that out unless you get started somewhere first. So that's number one. Number two, do I start applying for jobs as a clinical research coordinator? So yes, depends on your background. If you are, like, always think of what you have to offer. Think of the research clinics that would need a study coordinator, okay? Um, What do they need? Usually they need help recruiting patients. Usually they need help getting studies for their clinic. And of course, in addition to needing more people to be coordinators, it's still relatively difficult to get a study coordinator position without experience. So this is why I think it doesn't hurt to apply for coordinator positions, but I think while you are also doing that, you should be reaching out to other clinics in your area to intern unpaid internship if you can even if it's for like a month okay because and and how do you do that you don't just contact these clinics and tell them you want to intern that sounds like more work for that clinic what you do is you tell them hey I've been watching this guy's videos or I've been listening to this guy's podcasts and he taught me how to recruit patients uh, or he taught me how to Build your social media brand. Go to my Patreon channel for five bucks a month. You'll learn how to do that. Or he taught me how to get studies. You you can watch all my webinars on this and learn these things for free. You don't need experience to do any of those three things I mentioned. You don't need experience, but every research clinic needs these things. Uh, Needs one, if not all three of these things, all right? Or think of other ways you can help, all right? And then approach the sites with that. Say, hey, I know how to get studies. Let's just use that as an example. I know how to get studies. Um, I would like, in exchange, I don't want any payment. I just, I will do it for you for free, 
but I my goal is to become a clinical research coordinator so I'd love experience on my CV okay and it's not like every clinic you approach with this strategy is gonna say yes it's still gonna be a numbers game but it's it's like a much less numbers than actually applying for that coordinator job with no experience so in my and other people's experience if you have no previous clinical research background and you apply like entry-level positions somewhere as actual jobs it's gonna take like 400 applications All right. if you use my internship strategy and you can afford to intern for like a month or three months in your spare time um, your volume is gonna be much less I mean it might be like 25 clinics before somebody says yes might even be 10 okay so uh, it's exponentially easier to do it this way if you show what value you can provide up front don't just say I want to intern for you that's usually not going to generate interest uh, because they know that what that means is they have to train you on research and they don't have time for that so and and also if you're like a phlebotomist or you have something practical to offer to the site like you know how to draw blood or maybe do EKGs you can offer those services too but I really think those three things uh, getting patients or community outreach, getting studies, and building their their social branding. Okay, those things anyone can do with no experience in clinical research and do it well and get the sites interested in uh, them. Okay, number three, in terms of opportunities in the future, what career options follow after CRC? So what career options follow after clinical research coordinator? It literally can be anything, okay? It can be site director. It can be senior clinical research coordinator, depending on the organization you're in. It could be site owner. It could be CRA. It could be project manager. It could be working at a vendor. I mean, it, it, literally all kinds of things. You really what determines career options after you've been a CRC for, let's say, two or three years is you and where you want to focus your efforts because now you, you have experience you don't need to do any more interning everybody's gonna want you it's just a matter of where you wanna go what you wanna do so future like if you wanna see like just a snapshot of uh, real opportunities in the industry just go to indeed go to indeed or ziprecruiter dot uh, com indeed.com ziprecruiter.com and just type in clinical research and then you'll see hit enter and you'll see all the different job titles that exist at this moment and just keep doing that and you'll see hey I never knew what a clinical trial administrator was by the way that could be different things at different organizations or I never knew what a uh, regulatory affairs person was well now you'll you'll see so you can kind of map out where you want to go um, so really to answer your question in terms of future opportunities some people love staying a CRC some people hop around at different clinics as a CRC become site directors site owners many people become CRAs uh, but then people go into other things too so it's really up to you number four in terms of job stability how stable are jobs in this field what are the more stable positions in clinical research? So job stability, clinical research, I think what attracts a lot of people to clinical research besides the fact that um, it seems like it's really cool. It is really cool, but it seems the perception is like, hey, we're working on future treatments. It, it seems like really innovative and it is, but not at the levels we're actually working at. But still, there's there's gonna be a lot of interest now, even more so after after this covid pandemic because clinical research is in the news now so you're gonna have a lot more competition coming in and wanting to learn more about research so definitely check out the crc academy and the cra academy and my patreon to stay uh, abreast of everything that's happening but as far as stability like what what attracts people to this industry besides the uh, the cool factor I guess is 
the salary and the and the stability because I've been in this industry since 2005 full time. During that period, I've been through the Great Recession of 08, and I've now experienced the uh, COVID pandemic. All right, both of those times were really bad for the economy. The 08, the Great Recession of 08, 09 really lasted like a lot longer. And I did see many CRCs and CRAs and other positions being let go. Um, and, you know, that, that downturn was really like two years, three years, um, which doesn't mean that if you were a CRA that was let go that you wouldn't be rehired in a few months. Uh, but uh, it definitely was um, more stable than other industries because other industries get decimated during that time. Research, there was it was still bad, but it was probably one of the better industries then too. 2020, during this COVID thing, a lot of people got furloughed, um, although not as many as 08, but a lot of clinics also shut down because they didn't have enough cash to withstand three months of complete lockdown as of the as of this recording we're in June 10th and so we're like in month three maybe month four things are just starting to open back up so a lot of those people that got furloughed in research during COVID actually within a month and I even interviewed some of these people one of them you can just go on my YouTube and see these interviews somebody got furloughed as a CRC got hired a month later as a CRA. So what I've been noticing during this pandemic is a lot of people who got furloughed actually got rehired within one to three months at a, actually like a higher position, a better position than what they had before. And more often with a better company. I mean, I've seen this like at least a dozen times personally just during this last uh, quarter with the COVID. So as far as stability, uh, I think it's one of the most stable industries uh, around. I mean, it'd be hard to find, you know, here's a challenge to you guys. Try to find a more stable industry than in clinical research. Let's let's see. I'm sure there are other stable industries, but research has got to be up there, like at least top 5% uh, as far as stable industries, at least for now. Who knows? Who knows uh, as technology starts starts disrupting more things, vir you keep hearing about virtual trials, but I don't think that's actually going to make an impact on, as far as job stability for people, at least in the next decade. But who knows after that? Nobody knows uh, after that. In terms of salary, what's an average salary for CRC and CRA? So for this, just go to Glassdoor because it varies a lot based on geographic location all right but for a CRC anywhere from 36,000 a year to over a hundred thousand a year I've seen and then for a CRA usually anywhere from like 55,000 a year to there's some that make 300,000 a year uh, so it really depends on and when you start getting into those higher levels these are people who uh, become independent contractors, which is related to another question we're going to get to um, in this episode. But that's the salary. But to be specific of where you're located, uh, just go to Glassdoor and look it up. Uh, how do you suggest moving up the career ladder in the clinical research field? Again, this depends on you. What are your interests? What do you want to do? Uh, that's the best way to move up because there, there are a lot of things in this industry. There are regulatory affairs, there are startup, there is recruitment, there's budgets, there's project management, there's monitoring, and then there's all the different therapeutic indications within it. And then there's devices, there's drugs, there's biologics, there's virtual trials. Really, um, it's there's not one size fits all strategy. It's more, where do you wanna go? and then figuring out a way to do it. And once you're in the industry, it'll make more sense what you need to be doing. Um, so you'll know what you need to do at that point. How difficult is it to move up the career ladder in this field, for example, to senior or director levels? Not difficult at all. Um, sometimes it could be difficult within your own organization. If you're at a 
bigger organization where there's a little bit less uh, upward mobility. But that's also why there's a lot of turnover in this industry and why a lot of people who are in this industry um, end up jumping around different jobs because they get that promotion. Just like we saw during the furlough, you know, people who uh, couldn't get promotions at their current place of employment got furloughed, everything seemed bad, and then they got hired for something better that they wanted. So we've seen a lot of that. So that's, um, it's relatively easy if you're willing to explore the market opportunities. If you're scared of jumping around from different companies, it might be harder, but uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll figure that out too as you learn your company culture. Uh, finally, we got the other question about the independent contract. So this is from the other person who asked. So out of curiosity, if you take on independent contracts, would you need to have your own business set up at that point? I would love to see a separate video on that. Um, so yeah, if you do take on independent contracts as a contract CRA, you will make more. It's also more risky because your contracts can end. Um, but if you are good and you do a good job of networking and building your brand, which is all the stuff I teach on Patreon, my Patreon channel, I mean, I teach you how to use LinkedIn to build your brand. The biggest, like 90% of the battle is for people to know what you do and who you are. So you, you, I recommend you set up an LLC, but you don't have to. And the reason I recommend you set up an LLC, and this is not legal advice, I'm not an attorney, is liability. So you want to keep, uh, you want to have limited liability. You don't want them to come after your personal assets should something happen. These things are rare, but they could happen. Like, for example, if you're a CRA, you took on too many contracts, and you were negligent, and the, maybe the sponsor wants to sue you. you that's rare but it could happen um, you would it would be best if you had your own LLC or S Corp instead of just uh, instead of just your name so that hopefully that answers your guys questions keep them coming 949-415-6256 and again try to join the patreon if you get a chance it's only five bucks a month we do a monthly mastermind and Lots of videos on how to develop your career uh, or your business using digital marketing and social media. So hopefully this answers your question. Good luck to everybody. Talk to you soon. Thank you for watching and listening. Bye-bye.